Okay, let's do another confidence interval example. Um, and let's go ahead and read this one and we'll just start working our way through it. So it says, Lynn is interested in determining the proportion of people at the school who self-identify as having red hair. She took a random sample of 400 individuals at her school and found that 89 self-identify as having red hair. She wants to form a confidence interval that misses the true proportion only 5% of the time. Okay, so we need to go through and start figuring out what type of data we have and and uh, then going through and actually calculating the confidence interval. Okay, so let's start off with data type. So the type of data that we have right now is categorical. Okay, because we're just, um, the people here, we're not like measuring how red their hair is or the length of their red hair. We're just saying, do you or do you not self-identify as having red hair? This would be just a yes or no. This would be categorical data. Okay, so that's our first one right there so we've got categorical data all right number two so since we've got categorical data let's look at the sample size and we'll look at n equals 400 okay and then let's look at what so we're trying to find proportions here so we're looking for a p hat what we found in the sample okay so she found that 89 self-identify as having red hair out of the total 400 so just divide how many people self-identify as having red hair by the total number of people who were surveyed and that gives us a p hat okay so we've got p hat so now what we want to do is we want to find our standard error so remember our standard error has a little um it's kind of a funny equation but we can do it the standard error equals We'll do it's the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat divided by n. Now make sure that your sample size n is inside of the square root. I see that problem a lot on people's work, so when we're doing this, we need to do that. Now if you notice, when we're doing this confidence interval, it's a little different than what we were doing last week when we were finding our standard error. The standard error then we did p times 1 minus p. The problem is, is that in this case, we literally don't have the true proportion if we did we wouldn't even need to be making a confidence interval so we just have to do that little change for this standard error calculation and now we use the p hat um, and times one minus p hat okay so we hit enter and we get our standard error all right so if we remember for our confidence interval equation so we've got the confidence interval is going to be equal to p hat times or sorry plus or minus and then we use this z, and I've been using this little squiggly brackets for the sub. So we'll do alpha, and I'll just shorten that to a, alpha divided by 2, multiplied by the standard error. Okay, so we've got the standard error. We should probably figure out what alpha is. So alpha equals, we go back in here, it's going to be 5%. 5% is like is remember alpha is the percent of the time you're willing for your confidence interval to actually miss capturing the true population parameter so in this case the true population proportion so our alpha level is 0.05 and since we know what alpha is we know that the confidence level is equal to one minus alpha okay so now we're ready to figure out what this z value is we've got alpha divided by oh, we don't have alpha divided by two yet we'll do alpha divided by two ad two equals a divided by 2 and we get 0 0.025 alright so now that we've got that let's go ahead and go to our commander let's go to distributions and continuous distributions and with the p hat one of the nice things about the sample proportions is that we're always going to be using the normal distribution so we can go over to the normal distribution normal quantiles and all we've got to change is this alpha divided by 2 we're still using the standard normal distribution with the mean of 0 and the standard deviation of 1 so the probability is going to be 0 0.025 and we can go ahead and click OK and here we go for our Z so I'm going to put Z equals I'm just going to copy this and paste it and now I've got my Z value alright so I've got everything that I need from a confidence interval so confidence interval low is going to be equal to p hat minus z times the standard error and then i can do the same thing for the high only this time i'm going to plus and i will hit enter okay so now let's write our confidence interval statement so we can say that lin is 95 percent confident 
that, sorry, the true population um, proportion proportion for the number of students at her school that self-identify as having red hair is somewhere between, I now just need the low value, so I'm just going to, uh, let's see if I can, I, nope, I can't, never mind. We'll do 0 0.1817 for the low, and 0 0.2633. All right, there we go. She's ninety-five percent confident of the true proportion of the true population proportion for the number of students at her school that self-identifies having red hair is somewhere between like eighteen percent and twenty-six percent of the population. All right, so that's how you go through and do it with uh, sample proportions. Like it's really pretty straightforward once we realize that this equation is pretty easy. Um, remember this standard error is a lot of times written in this form, the equation, with this square root of the p hat times well minus p hat divided by n. But we can kind of break it down to some easier pieces. And once we do, I mean, our calculations are really easy when we have all the pieces. So I highly suggest labeling all of your data and going through kind of methodically. And you should be able to get through these. All right, good luck.